Hi everybody, welcome to the Tuesday Tips. We are going to be carrying on with our machine embroidery tips that we're going to be sharing with you and today it's going to be all about hooping. So many times when we do our beautiful embroidery design, the result isn't always as good at the end because our hooping was incorrect. We either didn't hoop correctly with our stabilizers, we pulled the fabric too much or we didn't pull, um, we left it too slack if I can put it that way. So, so many factors can come in when we are embroidering. So we are really touching now on the basics of the hooping and these are also questions that we always got when we did our machine embroidery classes in the, in the shop. So also again today I've convinced Cynthia to actually speak to or talk with you guys about um, the machine embroidery hooping. She's really been um, I can I say in the Benina side when we did the shop she was the one that always gave tips and techniques again on digitizing as well because she is a digitizer so I actually managed to convince her to sit with me or stand with me when we're talking about the hooping and she's going to be doing most of the talking in any case I'll just be asking a couple of questions here and there so let's start looking at what you should be looking at when you're hooping your fabric we're going to take you through the basics now of the hooping and I've actually got Cynthia with me. Now Cynthia is the expert in machine embroidery. She's actually been with me for such a long time and you won't believe it that she does digitizing, she does a lot of embroidery and she's got all her own tips and techniques as well and sometimes I do something a little bit different to what Cynthia does but we still get to the end result at the end of the day. She loves working with her embroidery template and um, where I would rather go and do my marks on my fabric she'll go with her embroidery template on a machine and she will position where she wants to embroider the design. So I'm going to now let Cynthia take over the talking and I'll be here and there asking questions and if there's something that I also have another way of doing we'll share that with you as well. All right, Cynthia, so you can take the floor. Okay, so we're just going to cover a little bit about um, hooping the do's and the don'ts today. Um, a lot of people experience problems when they hoop and they don't always blame themselves, they tend to blame the machine. And nine out of ten times it's user error. So we're just going to cover some of the techniques and the tips that I use when I am hooping. And hopefully they'll help you. If you have any other suggestions, like LCB says, you're welcome to share it with us. My ideas and suggestions are not set in stone, but it works for me. Okay, so the first thing that I'd like to share with you is the sticky mat. It's usually what they put on the carpet. You can get it at most craft shops or at fabric shops. And you see it stops your item from, from moving around. And what that's nice for is if I'm hooping, I don't have to chase my hoop around my table. Okay, it stays where it needs to be. So I use this non-slip mat, it comes in a roll and you just cut it. I use this to actually stabilize my hoop and this is the, the center part that was left when I cut it out. I'm going to show you now what I'm talking about. And this was ideal for, as I said, putting my hoop on so that I um, don't have to chase it around the table. Okay, I'm going to show you a tip that I saw somewhere as well, which is actually quite a nice tip. If you're working with a fabric that is slippery, for example a satin fabric or anything that's got a slight slip and you feel that your hoop is not gripping it, there's a lot of techniques out there on the internet that are suggested. Um, double sided tape, cotton tape that's wrapped around, I personally don't like that. It gets grubby. Yeah, have, you, have you got it? Sorry I'm interrupting the hooping but your tips on cleaning the hoops. You just use sunlight liquid. I use warm water and sunlight dish dishwashing liquid or any dishwashing liquid. And um, I also read that you can use the baby wipes. I've never tried baby wipes, but it comes recommended. Um, some people say acetone. I'm a little bit worried about acetone because it might take the coloring or if you but have also any it might, might also just eat a little bit of the yeah. plastic as well. So, so I'm not one for acetone. Just be careful if you are using the warm water and sunlight method that your hoop isn't a um, sensor hoop. For example, our Burnett range of embroidery machines has a sensor on the actual hoop. Now obviously you can't take that and insert it in water. You're going to damage your sensors. I don't even insert this in water. I basically take a clean dishcloth, a little bit of warm water, some sunlight liquid and I just give it a good mm. wipe. What okay. I did see, a tip that I saw and I thought this was quite clever. I, as I said, I use this but sometimes it's a little bit difficult 
to hoop because it is quite thick. I don't know if you can see, it's quite thick. So the other tip that I saw is you take a piece of felt. Let's just move that. And you take your inner hoop and you do a line around there and you cut in about a centimeter in from that. That's going to allow you to grip nicely without moving, but it's also staying within your grids area. Can you see? It's not going into the area of my embroidery. And this also works very, very well. It gives you that yeah. non-slip effect. Yeah, and that is also, again, for your really thinner fabrics, your um, slippery fabrics, if you're going to be working with that. Because as soon as we start embroidering, we've always got a bit of a pull compensation. Um, and the pull compensation is just when the stitches is actually pulling the fabric in a little bit. And we are going to touch on that just now. We, I'll speak to Cynthia about the pool compensation. So that's just going to prevent the fabric movement going more inwards. And then again, we've got all those funny things happening with our embroidery design as soon as there's pool compensation in play. Okay, you are going to get some compensation no matter what fabric you're using and no matter what you hoop because embroidery is going to pull your fabric in slightly. Mm -hmm. So you do have to take that into consideration. You are going to get slight pulling. But again, if you're working with that silky or slippery fabric, this is just going to help yeah. so that it doesn't pull it, pull it in. in. While we, well, let's just mention it. While we are actually on the pull compensation at the moment, what happens a lot of times is if you're working with a dense design as well, by the end of your design, and especially if it's a bigger design, by the end of the design, you're going to see that the stitches is actually pulled away from your outline. You've got a gap between your outline and your embroidery design. And sometimes um, it's even as if it's overlapping onto the one area and pulled away from the other area. Now that is all pull compensation because the fabric has gone in a little bit, like Cynthia said, and then we've got a problem that our outlines isn't really perfect on our embroidery design. I don't know if you've got another way of actually explaining it. Yeah, them. that's one of the reasons why it, ha uh, it happens. And then also the way that you hoop. And the stabilizers that you use yeah. we'll get into that, that we're going to show them now because this is this yeah because this is really going to go cover the basics for you today so we really wanted to just cover what we saw in the shop all the time with our embroidery machines what happened when people came in and said they had a problem with their design but in the meantime it was actually a problem with the hooping that they had Definitely. All right. Okay, that's why stabilizers are very important. Um, if you refer back to last week's video, we discussed stabilizers. It's very, very important to use a good quality stabilizer. Um, if you're going to buy cheap, you must expect problems. And if you're doing something for a client, you don't want that to, at the end of the day, cost you money where you need to replace the article because you've used inferior stabilizers or you've hooped incorrectly. That isn't what it's about. Okay, so you're going to take them through the steps now of hooping. We've told them about this, just stabilizing. Mm -hmm. And this is really for your thinner fabrics. I'm just repeating it. You're not going to need this with every single no, fabric that no. you are going to be hooping. This is really for that really thin, thin fabrics that we're working with. Yes. You can even use it for like your voils and that they tend to pull a little bit when they busy embroidering. It's not for things like Demon, it's not for your your heavier weight fabrics or your jacket fabrics or your um, I wouldn't even use it for my cottons. It's not necessary. No, I won't either. Okay. All right. So it's really, really just for your, your thin fabrics. All right. So now you're going to take them through the um, hooping. Uh, what's the correct way of hooping? Because what we find years ago when machines came out, everybody was told you're going to hoop so that it's drum tight. Mm -hmm. And we still get it. People are still hooping drum tight. But then it's got its issues as well. So if you're looking today, and you know what? If we look at when embroidery machines actually came out there wasn't a lot of information there wasn't all the stabilizers and the quality of stabilizers that we have today um, so they were really going drum tight and that is something we've just got to maybe show the people yeah. that they mustn't do a drum tight and the issues that we do get with whooping drum tight drum tight i think in those days if you think about it, it was more industrial machines it was companies that were doing embroidery it wasn't something yeah. that home owner you know um, ladies yeah. at home were doing and those machines work at a very very high speed so yeah. you had to maybe yeah. um, hoop it very very tight we don't need to do we that. don't need but i bought my first embroidery machine i think 1995 and when i actually started looking at all the things out there it was for even for our domestic machines as i said it came over from industrial mm -hmm. side yes. it was really drum tight so for years all we knew was go drum tight and every time you uh, had an issue someone said oh you didn't go and hoop drum tight but in the meantime the drum drum tight 
hooping is causing some of our problems. So Perfect. if you can take them through the hooping process now. Okay. I just want to show you this, but we're not going to work with this. I just want to show you how it would work. For example, that would go on top of my fabric. Okay. And I would line up. And then from there, this needs to be very, very loose. We don't want it tight when we're hooping. Otherwise, you're going to be fighting it. And we hoop. Okay. So it does take a little bit of practice. I'm just going to move off camera here just to loosen a little bit more. So you can see the pink, but it's not in my embroidery area. If you look at my grid, my grid area is totally free. So it's not going to interfere with the embroidery. So that's how you would hoop the piece of felt if you were using it. Okay, we're not going to use it for this particular exercise. It was just a tip that I was going to give you. So one thing that I also want you to notice is Cynthia went and she ironed in a center point for yourself. And this is where we're going to be talking to you really about when we're going to do multi-hooping. Um, but that's in next week's video where we're actually going to do a sample of multi-hooping. And um, we always need that center point. And that is really going to help me when I'm working with my template because wherever my center point is marked on my template, I want it to line up on my fabric there as well. Now I'm someone that always work with my template and I've got some sort of marker for myself. Cynthia is someone that when she actually works with her hoops, if she is slightly out, she actually goes to her machine and she puts the grid on, on her machine on the screen because a lot of our machines have got the function to show you the grid as well. And then she goes and she will count and she will know, okay, that her center point is actually one block up. Am I correct? And that's how yeah, you're working with it. Yeah, <laughs> yes. if she's out. But, but sometimes we're also hooping yeah. something. There's not too much fabric on this yes. area. Uh, instead of you floating now, I'm still yes. talking if we're yes. hooping, I know you float your fabric. But um, she will go, or let's say you've done two designs. You've already got a design on the bottom area there as well. Cynthia will go and hoop it and then she starts counting blocks. So she'll explain it more to you. I don't count blocks. I'm someone, I will make all my marks on my fabric and then by using my template, I would actually go and do the proper hooping because sometimes I might have embroidery design and my next embroidery design, if I'm playing with my designs, might be angling this way and I want to go and hoop it this way and I might just have a little bit of my embroidery design in there. So I'm someone, I'm always working with my template. As I said, Cynthia is actually going to a machine as well and she looks at where her template is sitting on the screen and where your design is sitting as well on the screen with the template. Yeah. So I'm just going to leave that to you again to do for us. Okay, so um, depending on what you're working, you might not want to have markings on here. Maybe you're doing a quilt for a baby and you're worried that the markings are going to ghost at a later stage because you can use a friction pen. They say friction pens ghost afterwards. I don't think you're going to have ghosting in South Africa so much because we're a very warm environment. I think it's more in places where you get that really, really cold that cold, they're yeah. to come back. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, you're not going to use a ballpoint pen. I'm just using it now so that you can see clearly. Use a um, water-soluble pen or a friction pen um, or also your chalk. The, your, 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 your chalk. Cho your, um, the chalk and also... Chalk pen. Yeah, but also because the air erasable is your purple felt pen and then we've also got the air erasable, which is the blue one. But there you've got... Oh, sorry, it's water soluble, but then you've got to go and put water onto your fabric. So maybe the air erasable one is the best, the purple one. I'm not fond of the purple one. I find the sometimes it leaves marks. The purple or the blue one? The purple one. The air erasable. Mm. Okay. Okay. But again, ladies, play. It, it, maybe it depends on the brand. But also depends on your fabric. Also, just test your fabric yeah. and see how the fabric is going to react to your stable, um, to your marker. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I've ironed mine in in this, but what you can do, as I said, as long as you've got the correct marker, you can go and mark this. I take it completely across my fabric. Oh, now my pen's not writing. So we'll just do a short little line like this. That to me serves no purpose. I don't know if you can see that. It serves no purpose because when I'm hooping, I need to make sure that that goes all the way there. 
So if I'm working with a little line, for me it serves absolutely no purpose. I'm so, going um, to. Especially if they're also pulling on the fabric a little bit, because as yes. I'm hooping and pulling, this line there can really go off center if you haven't got the whole line drawn. We want to make sure that whole line is lining up with my marks on my grid, because I've literally seen it when I didn't go all the way up because I'm hooping and pulling. Can you see how that's already pulling slightly mm -hmm. to the side? So it's actually my grid line is running there and my pen line is running there. So that's also why Cynthia recommends that you go and mark the whole piece of fabric with your marker. Definitely. And then getting back to just being a quilt and you want a square that is 20 by 20. Please cut your squares at least 22 by 22. As we explained earlier, you are going to get that pull compensation when you embroider. So if you embroider on a 20 by 20 square, I can guarantee you when you finish embroidering, it's going to be smaller than that. So we're going to bring this back. Remember, ladies, that it needs to be loose. You cannot hoop with a hoop that's tight over here. You're going to fight that hoop and the possibility of maybe cracking your hoop or breaking your screw mm. is we, a possibility. We've got to actually say... Um Ladies and gents, we've got some gents that's embroidering okay. as well. We say so used to in our class environment, we always had the ladies that came to embroider with us, but yeah. we do have some gents as well that's okay. embroidering with us now. So all our embroidery lovers. <laughs> that's <Okay>. a good word. <laughs> okay. So now I work with a grid. You've always going to see that a, your hoop always has a top and a bottom. On our Bonina hoops, we've got a little triangle. I don't know if you can see that. On my inner frame and I've got a little triangle on my outer frame that will indicate the bottom of the hoop now depending on the model that you've got wherever the arm lies versus where you are sitting that's the bottom of your hoop and there's always some kind of indication whether it's a circle or a triangle or a square or a bottom or a left or a right our deco hoops have left and right so please make sure that you always hoop correctly it might look like a true, tri uh, a true rectangle, but it isn't. And if you hoop upside down, for example, I put that triangle to the top of that hoop, I am going to get more pull on my fabric. You're not going to get a very nice stitch out. Okay, our hoops, and that again, it doesn't matter what brand of machine you've got, your hoop will always have a template, and the template will always fit comfortably. Please make sure again that you can read the name of the machine. For example, Bernina. If I put this template here... Can I just interrupt you for a second? Mm -hmm. The smaller hoop of the Beninas and the Decos as well, and I think a lot of the other brands will just fit in like this. But as soon as you go to a bigger hoop, like our oval hoop on our machines, also the maxi hoops and the jumbo hoops, you've actually got um, little hooks that you hook the, onto the template and the hooks relay or lines on your frame. I just want to also show you something. A lot of people say when you hoop, you need to make sure that let's just move this maybe okay I hope you can see that that you need to line your lines up with these little notches here you can already see that that notch does not line up with my center so it's not something that I'm going to rely on I'm going to rely on the fact that my cross grain on my template lines up perfectly with the cross grain I've drawn now I just want to show you something I'm going to mark my middle point there so there I've marked my center point if I had this hooped and I then turn my grid. Look where my center point is. Can you see ladies and gents? Okay, it's very, very important if you are gonna work with your grid to line up that the word Bernina or Alna or whatever machine you're using is legible. It's very important that it's not upside down, upside down that way. Okay, you can also see that the spacing not so much on this hoop, but on my bigger hoops, you can see, and on the deco hoops, you can definitely see it. The space from there and there and there and there are different. You can see it here on this one slightly. Can you see the difference? And that's where it throws your center point out. So okay, that's, very that's important. a very important, actually a very good tip that. Because okay, so we, we've had hoop. some instances, even in the class, where the hoops were upside down. Yes. We've had a lot of instances where the hoops have been upside down. And please, ladies, you know your machines. Make sure which is the up and the down of your hoop. Okay. Okay, so now you can see when we're hooping, and this is really if we want placement on our fabric that we've worked with. Uh, we always, always use our template, and um, you want to make sure that your placement is correct by using the template. Okay, so there I'm 99.9% .9 perfect. I'm going to pull, but I'm not pulling very hard. 
Do you see that my, my hoop is not um, tightened yet? What I'm doing is I'm just pulling very lightly and I'm not pulling my stabilizer. I'm just pulling my fabric very lightly to get it where it needs to be. Can you see it's 99.9% .9 lined up? You're not going to necessarily get it 100% every time. If this was running slightly, slightly out by a few millimeters, I would leave it as long as it's 99% See, I'm someone that will hoot. fiddle with it and that's just me. I will go fiddle till I get that straight line. But that's <laughs> now where I go to my machine and I switch my grid on and I see, okay, this is off by maybe three mils i will go and move it on my computer screen yeah and it see that's where really cynthia and i are different she does it on the screen i'm somewhere now this will bother me and i will keep <laughs> playing with my fabric till i've got that hooping perfect i'm just going to move off screen here just to tighten the screw ladies don't once you've got it in position don't lift it slide it okay and then just tighten it on the edge of the table we've hooped i can move that away and you can see the bottom is nice and flat and the top is nice and flat if i have a little bit of bubbling here i'm not going to worry too much about that if i have drastic bubbling and drastic pulling i need to rehoop all right okay are well, you going to show them now just how to pull to just yes. get a little bit and, and guys we really as i said if we work with wovens as soon as i pull i stretch the fabric and that's why we don't want to pull as much i don't want any stretch and that stretch is as it releases as i'm embroidering and that embroidery design is dense it starts pulling back and that is where we get the designs and you've got all those um, it either stands up a little bit or you've got all that Puckering. puckering around your design because the fabric just wants to relax back on itself again so uh, and we've seen people that go and they take this hoop and they are stretching this fabric and you cannot believe it um, and we don't want that so are you going to show them how to do mm -hmm. the how you tug on on the fabric okay so i've got my placement now where i want it i haven't tightened this completely because what i need to do now is i need to just tug a little bit now i'm not putting force i'm just tugging slightly and i'm not going to be tugging on my stabilizer i'm just going to be tugging on can my fabric. we take the template off so they can see mm. what you're doing okay we don't pull out when we are making our fabric straight because guaranteed this is going to pop out and you're going to have to start from scratch again we always pull to the inside of the hoop can you guys see it's just a slight slight tug and that is really to make sure if there was any folds that there's no more folds okay and you can do it a little bit on the corners as well i'm not worried about this that's outside of my embroidery area i'm worried about what's going on in the inside of my hoop okay i'm happy with that make sure that the corners of your hoop are pushed in and then just tighten it Word of caution, ladies, please don't use a screwdriver to tighten this. You are going to strip that little screw. Yes, you can replace them. Um, but if you just tighten it so that it's nice and tight for your fingers, if you don't have the strength in your hands, use a screwdriver, but please don't put that force. You're going to snap your screw. Yeah, something that I also wanted to mention, and that's just something that Megan from Benina Technical Services mentioned that you to us, or she mentioned it to me, I don't know if she mentioned it to you, and um, that was after they did a test on someone's machine that was hooping very tightly. Mm. She said if you are scared that it's too tight, you literally take the design and you just give it a poke like yes. that. And it just releases a little bit on itself, so now when your needle is going through this and you're sewing, or you're embroidering, it's already just released the fabric a little bit. That's what she told me mm. to do. Well, so it I, makes sense. I don't know if you do that as well. It makes sense. Yeah, not a lot, just, just one it's, poke. It's, uh, can you see, I've still got a bit of play on my fabric here, which is what we want. That's what, yeah, that's what we want. All right. Another thing that I also wanted to mention, now Cynthia has gone and she's done one layer of stabilizer. Now, sometimes we do want to use two layers of stabilizer, and that is when we're working very dense designs. If I'm not working a dense design, so it's not a high stitch count and it's not a very dense stitch out, then one stabilizing layer is fine. But as soon as you've got those really, it's, it's filled in, that whole design is filled in with stitches. If I can put it that way, if I'm talking about a dense design, then that means I've got to have maybe two layers. And on some machines as well, especially on, on my machine and your machine as well, we can go set the machine to do a basting stitch. Yes. And that basting stitch, all it's doing, it's actually stitching my fabric and my stabilizer together 
again, fighting that pool compensation. Everything is about pool compensation when we are busy embroidering. And by having that, and with, my, with both of our machines, actually, all our Benina uh, computerized machines. machines, I can go choose to do a basting stitch just around the frame area or a basting stitch around where the embroidery design is going to be. Now, I like to go and actually do on the frame mm, area. Yes. So that's something if I embroider, I always make sure there's a basting stitch. It is again, just helping my fabric um, not move in too much because I've basted it to my stabilizer. Yes. I agree with Elsie there. I love that basting stitch. Um, I would sometimes, if my design is very, very dense, I'd use the one that outlines the design. But for the most part, we do use the one that outlines the grid. Oh, all right. So ladies, yeah, we've got it hooped. My hoop arm fits on that side of my machine. I can see my mm. triangles match I'm, my I'm going. I'm going to have to put in ladies and gents in the screen because you keep saying okay. ladies. I'm so a, we I'm are talking to everybody, <laughs> not just the ladies. We're talking to the gents as well I'm if a, you are embroiderer. Do do, guys. Guys. That's I'm uh, learning else of his friends, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to um, show you some stitch outs that I've done, which have come out not so nice because of the way I've hooped. So on this little one here, I hooped very slack. So I didn't make my hoop tight enough. Or if it was a slippery fabric, I didn't maybe use the felt that is suggested. Yeah. Yeah. And also again, how many layers of stabilizing? You only used one I layer. I only used one layer of yeah. stabilizing. And this is, this is really a dense design. It it's is, very it's dense. Stitch upon stitch and they are densely stitched out. So that is the effect you're gonna get again. And it can be hooping and it can also be stabilizing. Yes. So both things you've got to look at, not just maybe hooping, but make sure that you've got a firm enough and two layers of stabilizer. Two layers of would stabilizer. You, just a question, Cynthia. Would you suggest um, with a stitch out like that to do cutaway? I think cutaway on this because I'm using a 100% cotton, which is basically the density of quilting fabric. And of course, a lot of baby things today are made with pure cotton because baby wants the best. And... I would say a stitch and cutaway definitely. Stitch and cutaway, what happens, the more I wash it, the more like fabric it becomes. Mm -hmm. So it's not scratchy, it doesn't look bad. And when I've finished working with it, I literally cut out around as close to the embroidery without damaging the embroidery as possible. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yes, so here I've both used the incorrect Great stabilizer, stabilizer and, and I've and hooped incorrectly. I also just want you to notice that Cynthia has drawn lines for us. So the first one that she's actually drawn and that is the red line. No, the blue one. The blue one. Yeah. Okay, was well, the... Is the original hoop. Yeah. And then when I was finished embroidering this little goat, I went and I did the red. Okay. And I outlined the hoop again. And here you can see what Elsie was talking about earlier. That stitch compensation. Yeah, it's, it's pulling the pool. fabric in. Yeah. All okay. right. Yeah. But where you can see the big, big issue, and that doesn't matter what machine you've got, if you're not using the correct stabilizer and you're not hooping correctly, you're going to get the stitch out. I don't know if you can see over here because it started puckering. And I'll we will put I'll, a picture I'll, on screen I'll of this in for as you. Well, so they can have a look at that. All okay. right. So there you can see that is really a no no. We don't want our embroidery, embroidery no. designs looking like this because it is just not a good look. Look how all that puckering is in that stitches, no matter how many times you are going to press it, it no. is not going to go away. No. All right. Okay, while Elsie said press, I just want to quickly mention something. We're going off hooping here, but since Elsie mentioned pressing, ladies, when you iron your embroidery when you finish, please don't iron from the top. Put a towel down on your ironing board, turn your, your embroidery face down, and then iron from the back. Never iron on your embroidery. A lot of the embroidery, because it's got the sheen, you can, depending on your cotton and your heat, possibility of scolding the cotton you can iron away that um, sheen but you also iron your embroidery flat yeah okay yeah. which is that's why defeating the, the object that's why you want the the uh, towel the towel so it just sinks into it a little, little yes. bit as you're working all right okay the next one we're going to do here is hooping too tight now here again you can see the movement on the hoop the red the, the blue was the original hooping the red is where it's moved after yeah that's your embroidered. fabric again your fabric pulling in because of the hooping definitely yeah. that one you can see it's just a little bit more pulled in than what what this one is there it was just a slight for the pull compensation there i can actually see it's moved in a quite lot. a lot on those areas and it's just pulled that fabric in and that's why we're getting all those packers again as well definitely and you can see here i don't know if you can see both of these in the screen but you see how this is like waving here 
and this one if I can get it here I don't know if you're gonna see it but can you see when I was telling you as well try and cut your fabric bigger than what you're going to um, want it at the end of the day because I don't know if you can see here this fabrics pulled slightly it's gonna happen because of embroidery it's but also dense design yes. so it's always important guys to look at your um, design that you're gonna do and look at your fabric if the fabric allows the dense design, then do it. I'm absolutely a firm believer that if my fabric is very soft, I can't go and do mm. a very dense yes. design, especially yes. if we're working on organzas or anything like that. I can't have that full no. stitch out. I need less stitches so that my fabric is going to distort. I'm sorry, <clears throat> so that my fabric will be distorting less than Definitely. what would usually happen. Mm -hmm. So always remember, there's always this combination of fabric stabilizer design how are they going to work together how am i going to put them together and it is just it's just even with decorative stitching on our sewing machines not even embroidery i can't go and do satin stitches on a very soft fabric mm. it's going to pull my fabric yes. so we've always got to see what is the reaction of what i'm doing on the fabric so so if you can get into that mind frame of always putting it together then I think you're not going to have as many problems when you yeah. embroider. And it's all about learning, ladies. You're going to all make mistakes, and that's how we learn. Even I, when I first started embroidering, made a lot of mistakes. It was trial and error. Okay, so allow yourself to make those mistakes, but allow yourself to make the mistakes on something that's not going to cost you at the end of the day to replace. I hope that this actually helped you, that if you had any questions on hooping or if you've had any um, issues with your embroidery designs that this has actually helped you a little bit things that you've got to look out for what you've got to do what you don't have to do so go again and play with your embroidery machine go do some of the embroidery designs now using some of the tips that we shared with you and then give us feedback tell us if it actually improved your embroidery design for you if you've had any other issues come up um, we really welcome all these questions and answer, or questions so that we can do a question and answer for you and then just answer your questions because what we will do with next week, we will carry on with some tips but then if there was questions, I will definitely let us answer that for you. So go and play now. If you've got your embroidery machine, go take it out, go embroider something. You don't even have to make something, just take a t-shirt or anything, even a towel and just go hoop, practice your hooping and go and embroider. And remember again, stabilizing is important. Hooping is important at the end of the day so that you get good results with your embroidery machine. So until next week's Tuesday tips, happy sewing.